Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stumps back for another OPTC video, and in today's video, it is the grandest party of them all, day three of season 15, and this one I'm very excited for. We're using Roger and Odin. Now, I was doing some testing. I put out a video unedited of Gear 5, because most of the time, you're probably going to be using Gear 5, but this guy is no joke. This leader skill, the special, as well as how good that quick slasher striker hybrid team is actually popping off. I'm actually really excited to showcase this for you t for today because I'm actually really, really loving this unit in Grand Party and in regular PvP. But let me know your thoughts and opinions of Roger Noda in the comment section below. While you're down there, bell the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. We've got content coming out the wazoo lately. All the Grand Party stuff, all the showcases. We've gone nuts with summons, so hopefully you guys have been checking those out. And hopefully you guys have been having some good luck too. With that said, let's dive in and check out Rodin in some Grand Party content. All right, so we found gear five, numero uno, and they're using a dex team up front, which, woo, we love that. Now, I am sort of playing around with what team works best for Roger and Odin, but obviously they boost slashes and strikers, and they also boost quick. Now, as I mentioned, the quick slasher striker hybrid team, it's going absolutely crazy at the moment, especially if you can go up against a strength build. If I had Momo, I wouldn't be as worried, but Izo Kiku, look, they're doing bits for now. We're using a free-to-play white bit on the bench to make up the five slashes, and then we just have Conjuro because he boosts um, Driven and um, Striker units, which is basically the entire team, besides the Izo Kiku and um, the Smoothie, but Strength are just, they're still in such a really, really good spot. Plus, they're very, very fast at getting their specials off, as well as reducing the cooldowns of Dex. Now, Dex are boosted at the moment, and we're using something like Kaku, so that way we can just easily take the cake with the first fight, and then we can uh, move into the second fight with our burst ability. It should be absolutely hunky-dory. You just need to use eight specials to get Roger and Odin ready to go, and when you're using stuff like this particular Luffy, like, you can do some serious damage, man. Plus, Strikers are super boosted. Roger and Odin do buff Strikers, and I think they do Slashes as well. If they do Slashes as well, it's even better, because, like, Kaku gets buffed, Law gets buffed, those types of characters, you can use like Marigold on the bench, or you could use Sasaki on the bench as well. Uh, I'm using Sasaki on my Slasher team, that's why you don't really see it in the bottom corner there. But you do need a Brook, so that way um, the Zora Sanji can go crazy. So I just wanted to showcase that I had a Brook on there somewhere. Fortunately, that um, they, these shots are going to go straight into the Gear 5 passive. Um, so that way they can actually start getting their burst ready to go. But with all those specials down, with all of those dead units, uh, we are in a pretty good spot here to sort of just rotate through, get our specials popping off nice and simply, and then we can uh, get on to the next fight with our burst. And I want to show you guys how good this Roger Odin burst is. Now, my Roger Odin is actually rainbowed. I got very, very lucky on the banners. Managed to rainbow them out and walk away with an extra copy. But you can still max out their, their attack in terms of their, their level being up to 150, as well as the Limit Break expansion. So, mine is neither of those. Mine sits at 120. So, um, you guys are about to see how much damage that can actually be, and how powerful it is just having it straight off rip. Now, the second fight is actually just a big old quick team, and then it's got um, Gear 5 in the back, which is a very, very weird combination. But the idea of my Slasher team, it's meant to go fast. We're using Cracker on the Slash team. We're using Odin for cooldowns as well. And that way we can get Zora Sanji ready to go as quickly as possible. And that way we can do some really, really cool stuff too. Plus, Roger and Odin, they also give um, cooldowns with their um, leader ability. So that way we're getting a monster, monster buff with uh, Cracker. Now, unfortunately, Free Spirits do get nerfed in terms of their cooldowns. But Roger and Odin and Cracker definitely do not. So once we kind of get around here, we're going to basically go like this. This is going to showcase how much power they've got. 5,000 fixed damage. Three units take massive, massive damage through defense. And it basically just kills three units off, off the front. Now, this can totally disrupt six-man six teams. It can absolutely decimate through particular lineups. And it's a very, very powerful ability. Plus, when you have then Roger and uh, Wipey going after this to just bink out another two characters. And then you got all your specials. If Zora Sanji goes, it's just crazy, man. It's actually insane what this particular leader has got to offer. It's just wild. Now Zora Sanji's going to bring Kadad forward and it's all Gucci from here. So absolutely whitewashing the first fight and showcasing their absolute power in Grand Party. I mean, I'm loving this unit, man. I'm loving this unit in Rumble. Let's move on to the next fight. 
All right, so once again, we found a gear five with a dex team up the front once again. So we're going to rock this strength team like we have been, but I might change it up and bring in a striker build for uh, the final part of the showcase because, like I said, Roger and Odin, they do boost strikers as well as slashes in their GP leader ability. So Jack is the big one that's getting boosted here, but hey, we could definitely move off some of these characters, bring in stuff like Sasaki, who's getting massive buffs from the rule set and from Roger and Odin. You can bring in stuff like Kid, who's getting some really, really nice stuff uh, on top of units like Kuzan and Kanjuro and those types of characters that you can just slide into the front lines to do really, really nice stuff. Marigold even with Santa Sonia on the bench and sort of still run it in a very strength manner, but have that ability to just sort of build it out, strike a base. So Luffy is just an absolute demon though. Kaido is very, very good and uh, this team will work very, very well unless it comes up against Quick. Now the idea of it is to never come up against Quick because um, I can always sort of just move it in a position where if it does, we're going to lose and we're going to be fine. But um, the idea of it is just to, just to absolutely decimate Dex. On top of that, we can always swap Kaku and Law, bring in maybe Marigold, so that way we can get the Santa Sonya passive, and that way you're sort of working well against other teams that may not be um, straight Dex centric. Now, um, where is... Okay, we managed to take out Blackbeard, which is good. There was the revive from Luffy that's already done. Sobble Mask is going to hit us pretty hard. We're going to take a big shot from Yamato as well. Um, Sobble Mask with his level limit break is just really, really good. We don't have any quick units here, so we're not going to take too much damage. But Kaido now getting below 50% means that he is going to go to the absolute wazoo. Big time damage there. Goodbye, Mr. Dalton. Moria is going to lower my defense. That's okay. Pell coming with a special. He did not, but is he going to get it? No, no, he's not. Unlucky. All right, we want to get our eight specials ready to go. Again, having Kaku in the front lines against Dex, me Dex means that we can get our specials very, very fast because we're lowering the enemy's chance of actually getting the specials. Um, but slashes are another really good option, and I would stereotypically run slashes first to get special cooldowns in terms of just popping the special off very, very fast. Now, everyone's got their, um, their haste ability. Luffy should wrap up this fight. And we can move on to the next fight where we're going to use the, the quick slasher striker hybrid team that I've been running. And it's um it's just so much fun. We're going up against strikers. And the reason I wanted to put them there is because strikers do have a tendency to have some uh, strength units running around. As I spoke about, you have stuff like Sasaki's, you have stuff like Kids, you have stuff like Jack's. Jack is always going to be a staple there. And then Wipid's another one, which this team's actually using. So using Izo Kiku, using Shiryu, we can really slow them down. And uh, do some really, really interesting stuff. But this team is so much fun. Smoothie has a 50% chance to re-roll re um, two units. Then you have the special bind of Shiryu and Izokiku. And then you get the cooldowns from Roger and Whitebeard. It's just... Uh, sorry, Roger Odin. It's just kind of nuts. So let's send this off. Let's see who we're taking out today. Let's try and hit someone that's not the strength units. Of course, we kill both the strength units. That's okay. The reduction of the, um, the defense sort of makes that damage go so, so nice. But it doesn't really matter, actually, because it goes through the defense. So now it's looking like a 5 versus 8 situation. And at this particular point, they're already in a really, really bad spot. King came in as well. He's a strength unit, so he's going to get special binded. Uh, he's going to take a lot of damage. He's going to get reduction of the CD. Plus, um, now we have Smoothie doing this. Just absolutely sending poor old uh, Tesora to the moon. And then we can use this to give 50% cooldowns to the two other units that just went. And basically, it's just a wrap from here. <laughs> it's just game over. Like, Roger and Odin, man, they're, they're really, really good. Really, really, really good. Like, that wasn't even 30 seconds, and they just wiped the entire team, man. It's crazy. So good. Let's move on to the last fight. All right, so I found Thor. He's a big old bopper, man. He's got some serious firepower, and he's using deck to the front as well, so I just sort of kept the teams exactly the same. We're going to run it back exactly the same way that we just ran it before, um, mainly because... We're approaching that nine win mark now, and um, I was going to change up the team and bring sort of like strikers into play and or whatnot. But hey, I, I saw Thor, and I was like, this is a good opportunity to showcase how much power these teams have going up against someone that has a disgustingly, disgustingly powerful box. Just in terms of investment, um, Thor's rocking like 85k teams, which is kind of nuts uh, if you guys don't know the gist of it. Our power level is a lot lower because we're not running; we are running a six-man team being the slasher team, and it is probably our most vulnerable, and that's why I like to put it first, stereotypically, uh, or last. If it's not going first, I do want it to go last, because I do, ne do either want it to either charge our ability to get our burst ready to go, or have the ability to sort of just whitewash the final team with a burst 
at hand. So that's always going to be nice. But Jack's going to get some nice HP cuts off here. There's a lot of damage from Jack in Grand Party, man. Luffy got the haste from um, good old Kobe. That's always really, really nice. Taking out Doflamingo there is a very, very good sign. It means that we're not going to take any damage at the back end of the fight. And unfortunately, Kaido didn't get the haste. Or he did and he went first. I don't know. Unlucky. Now they've actually got their specials ready to go. This is going to be a little bit of a problem because Big Mom... Oh, uh, Big Mom's not ready, but she will be ready. Like, unless she... Yeah, there she, she just got it there. She's going to half stats everyone by the look of it. That's kind of annoying. Um, massive, massive damage from Big Mom there. Very, very good for his burst. Um, didn't hit Kaido, though. The one unit I kind of want to be at lower HP didn't get hit. But look, that's not the end of the world there. Sober Mask is basically just going to start killing units here, and they're going to get the burst pretty nicely. No, no deaths. Okay. I thought with the half stats for sure. Um, okay, now now he's binking characters. Mori is going to get some cooldowns. Don't love that, but that's okay. The fact that they've got their special now is actually going to be a really good opportunity to show you guys how much tanking this um, the quick team has. Provided we don't get hit by it on this particular fight, which I would really appreciate if it didn't happen like that. The cooldowns of... No, I don't have a Marigold on team. Forgot about that. Uh, Kobe's not around, so we can't get the haste anymore. This is going to be this is going to be real tight. Unfortunately, that Big Mom... Big Mom half -statting, statting everyone was kind of like really good for him. But uh, we should be okay now. I just need Luffy to go. I need Luffy to go. Okay, nice, nice, nice. We're good now. We're good now. If he uses the burst now, we can still win. It didn't matter because we won. All right, awesome. That was actually pretty... That was pretty pretty tight, if I'm honest with you. Um, we could have done stuff like bring Toki in over um, Kaido as well if we're reversing stuff like Dex, but... Look, it's not the end of the world. Going on to the second fight now, we are going to take a burst right off rip. Um, and this should be a Limit Break Expanded 150 Luffy coming straight at us. I do believe that is the case. So let's see how we go. 18 cooldowns though on our team, by the way. If you have a look at, <laughs> have a look at our cooldowns, man, that's kind of crazy. Izo Kiko is sitting at 33 speed, 20 cooldowns. Just don't wipe my entire team, man. Don't do it. Okay, sweet. So look how much tanking we have, because we just... The amount of sheer power we have with our team is just so nice. All right, let's, um, let's get our cooldowns down a little bit, ready to go, and then we can go like this. Nice chunky 5k, that 10k. Now, this is a very invested team, by the way, and it still managed to tank that well. Like, that's super impressive. Jack is now dead, though. You love to see that. Tesoro isn't going to have his special ready to go, but that's okay. We have a lot of speed rocking on our team, plus uh, smoothie roll back the specials, which is really, really nice. We want to try and get three characters using their specials before Roger and Odin. Because Roger and Odin will give a 50% cooldown to three characters on the team, not including themselves. So now that we have three characters ready to go, uh, we can use Roger and Odin. Then Roger and Odin will give back 50% cooldowns, which will make Smoothie basically ready. Unless they get special one here, which would suck. Okay. They didn't get special one, but that's okay. Uh, Tesoro did. Big damage. Nice. Roger Whitebeard have been rolled back as well, which is awesome for us. Smoothie dying there is actually a kind of a scary, scary situation because now Roger and Whitebeard are going to go. I was relying on Smoothie to sort of roll them back, but um, I'm hoping they just attacked there. I was sort of looking away. Okay, now they're dead, so it's fine. Beautiful. Um, the free to play Whitebeard can actually hit pretty hard too. Tesoro getting special binder for 20 seconds was actually kind of big big scary. Uh, we're actually getting close to getting our burst ready to go once again because this quick team, it moves so damn fast. No, this is going to hurt. Okay. Roger and, uh, Roger and Odin just hiding hiding away is actually so good for us. Alright then, this is going to wrap it up for them. Beautiful stuff. Goodbye Thor. Thank you for an amazing fight. Boom. Awesome. So that's Roger and Odin. Let me know what you guys think down below. I'm having a lot of fun with the character. The, I don't think they're gear 5 level. I still think Gear 5 is probably the best GP leader with what they're doing. But Roger and Odin and the introduction of this other sort of shenaniganry with this quick team and having another unit that can sort of do some fun stuff is really, really good for the game mode. Like I said, let me know what you think of them in the comment section below. While you're down there, bell like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure to get your Lore Skulls. And before you finish up, make sure to change your leaders. We're at the pointy end of the season now. So make sure that you guys are changing your leaders. 
to something that isn't Gear 5. But like I said, bro, like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one.